and the maid. He was so funny. Um, so we worked for well, Kevin. And we Les worked Claypool, at Claypool. Magnitude 8 original yeah. studio was in Les Claypool. It was just here before. It was in his, literally in his garage. garage. And he had egg cartons. <laughs> egg cartons up to, to soundproof. And eventually we all made it to a wonderful studio called Magnitude 8. And all through the 90s, we recorded all these shows, Trigun and... I don't... Do you guys know those? Yeah! Oh, yeah. Trigun, El Hazard, Cowboy Bebop. Yes. Trigun, El Hazard. Yes. Was Cowboy Bebop recorded out no, there? No, Cowboy Bebop was in Burbank. Oh, that, that's um, right. Yeah. We did a Cowboy Bebop game over there. Oh, right. The one that Mary told me never came out. Yes, that's right. That's that sucks. Right. But anyway, that was the beginning. And only recently, uh, we've been reminded that um, Brian... Cranston, Breaking Bad, was with us back then. I don't wow. remember him, but he's on he Orgas. When he goes on shows, he likes to mention he, he was on uh, he was on Power Rangers, which we were all on. And, and I think I remember him from that. So then we're in anime there. So. Wow, when Power Rangers teaches you to not use drugs, and now some now a actor who's the famous and known for being a drug dealer is in it. Well, he was a bad guy in Power Rangers, so that's kind Breaking of Power Rangers typecasting. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, from Magnitude 8, how did you guys get in with Saban? You know, uh, all I'm going to say is that it, the, the, uh, it's a small town, yeah. and, and, and yeah. everyone kind of knows everyone, and Saban had a beautiful studio on Wilshire Boulevard, yeah. and I remember going there to, aud to aud yeah. audition for Digimon. Any Digimon fans out there? Yeah. Who's the one that yeah. Yeah. I don't know, you get the call, and you go there, and everyone's there, and, and, and we're very... Was we're it very Rita? Close. Rita brought us in to Rita Saban. Rita Costa, who's yeah. the best, and... We're, we worked with her on Honey Bee Hutch, remember Honey Bee Hutch, yeah. back, back in the day, it was only... Back uh, in our day. Back in our day, it was only animes. And then it became Studiopolis, Saban, Bang Zoom. Bang Zoom. You know, where does Todd work? Uh, VSI. VSI, all these places yeah. that we all... SDI. But everyone kind of knows and sees everyone. But we're, we've, we've been around, we've been kicking around for a long time, the four of us, so, you know. Yes. Don't look community. too close. It's a small community yeah. of actors. I don't know who called us, but we all went over to the Yes. Yeah. Actually, I just want to make a comment that I actually grew up with you guys when I was little. I actually, when I was really little, I used to hear all your voices when I used to watch like all sorts of animes and cartoons. And to be honest, to me, as an aspiring actress, this it's a huge honor to myself. A huge honor to you guys. Oh, that's really, really sweet thank to do that. Seriously, thank, I was to say thank you guys so much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you for telling us that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. We all see us and the whole crowd of people at everything. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. uh, it's like any business. It's a small world after it's all. It's like any yeah. business. Okay. <laughs> what else you got? Well, tell me how you guys got in with Bang Zoom. Same, similar or... I remember I got a call from Eric Sherman sure, yeah. out of the blue, and I I remember auditioning and recording like at their house. Uh, yeah, we're talking about that. I think I yeah I remember going yeah. to their house before they even oh, had wow. the studio, and then before they even had the Bang Zoom studio, we recorded somewhere else. The castle. The castle. The castle. The studio. And this was yes. interesting about the castle. Is that it was a little booth, and they had just put it together, and they had just glued the stuff on the walls. And every time I went in to record, the smell of the glue was still there. Yeah, yeah. man, it was awesome. Uh, I, yeah. So back then, I, that was when you were doing Ray Earth and Kenshin? Yeah, no, well, no, Magic Ray Earth and Van Dredd. Um, oh, Van Dredd. Oh, Kenshin was a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Dorothy's worked a lot. Talk to her and Melissa. They know stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, doesn't mean you haven't worked either. Thank you so much, my agent. I yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> you feel well, he works the crowd. That's why we yeah, have him here. Yeah. Every, everyone, these anime places started to explode, and then everyone, yeah. you know, you see everyone. Everyone's and then we working also everywhere. recommend each other. We all, you know, I'll say to, are you in uh, with Bob and SDI? Or no, I got to get you, you know, we, we all sure. try and go to bat for each other. Yeah. That's the good thing about having family in, in the business. Here. Mm. Wow, I killed the crowd on that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
It was a nice thing so to what? say. Oh, I'm trying to think of something else yes, to say. Young lady. Okay, I just want to say like how you guys like how you're a bunch of family, like your whole entire family from voice actors. You're just like the American versions of the Dobson brothers who are up in Canada who are also Canadian voice actors and they're three brothers who go into voice acting all together. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dobson brothers. Oh yeah. Hey. hey, we love them Canadians. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Up in Canada. Oh, They're in Canada. I think they're in Rush, man. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> so, Melissa, let's talk about Broadway and how you got to be in Wicked. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, um, gosh. So, you know, with um, voiceovers and, and acting, I also have this dance background and I also sang all my life. And um, I always did theater. And, um, gosh, it was, it was in the year 2000. Um, I had been doing a lot of L.A. theater and going across the country doing regional theater as well. And I had, uh, I think, a, a local director, um, uh, Randy Brenner. You know Randy Brenner, right? Yeah. And um, uh, he said, you know, we're going to do a reading of this musical that Stephen Schwartz wrote years ago. It's called Snapshots. And Snapshots is kind of like a, a it's probably like Stephen Schwartz's jukebox musical. Like it's all Stephen Schwartz musicals, you know, before Wicked, of course. Um, but it, and, and there are three actresses and three actors in the show playing the same character at different times in their life. Okay. So, and by the way, Stephen is going to be there when we do this performance. Oh, gosh, okay. So I got to meet Stephen Schwartz, and he was very complimentary, and I'll, I'll never forget, like, just meeting him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Didn't Stephen Schwartz, he wrote Pippin. Yeah, Pippin, and Godspell, and The Magic Show, and then he wrote... What, Pocahontas? No, not, it's not Pocahontas. Jeff Burns okay. on Ice? Didn't he write yeah, that Jeff musical? Burns on Ice. Oh, God. Um, anyways, so Stephen was there and I met him. So a week later, after I had done this, this little production of Snapshots, I got a phone call. And it was on my answering machine, in the days of answering machine. But it was the year 2000. Okay. And it's, beep, hi, this is Stephen Schwartz, and I wanted to leave a message for Melissa, and I, I'm writing this new musical. And um, we're going to do a little workshop of it. It's just the first act. It's called Wicked. It's based on this book by Gregory Maguire. I'd love for you to be a part of it. Wow. So I was like, wow. Oh, okay, I better call him back. So I called him back. And I did this first workshop. And it was the, it was the first act only. And it was two and a half hours. Was the workshop in L.A. or New York? It was in L.A. Okay. It was in L.A. And it was all because it was pro it's, it's produced by Mark Platt who is at Universal out here. And his passion is the Wizard of Oz, Mark Platt's. So, and Mark Platt just produced Mary Poppins, the movie Mary Poppins. Mm. And his um, son uh, won the Tony Award. And his son won the Tony Award for yeah, Evan Hansen. Hansen, that's right. <laughs> who, when I met him, he was a little kid in pajamas, and we'd go to his house and he'd give dinners and the kids would be in their pajamas. And he, Ben Platt was one of the kids. So, um, so anyways, one workshop turned into another, turned into another, turned into another, and then it was finally, Melissa, were, and, he, and Stephen always called me personally. Wow. I never went through a, my agents or anything. So, so finally he said, Melissa, um, I'm, we're going to bring it to New York, and I want you to be a part of it, but you have to come out to New York. We're going to do an audition. Um, I need the, the choreographer Wayne Salento needs to see you dance. But I had already met the director Joe Mantello, and and I had already worked with with Stephen now, and he knew my voice and everything. So I had to go to New York, and I, I it was like the final callback I got to go to. I didn't have to go through everything because I had already worked with him. So um, this is a very lucky story. This doesn't always happen, and I thank my lucky stars for it. You know, it's a great story. So um, I did the. The callback, and then Stephen called me the next day. He said, "You're in. You're going to Broadway." Nice. That was nice. It. Yeah. it was really huh? Come on, now. come on. I told her to dance class. Come on. Okay, dancing great. Well, you guys get to go to opening who, night when she. Who else? Here? Wait, who else was in that show with you? Who oh. now tours with Queen? Oh. oh. Well, okay, Adam Lambert. Wow. But Adam Lambert was not in the original Broadway company, but I did the Los Angeles company that sat at the Pantages for two and a half years. 
And um, Adam was in that. And Adam also did the national tour. I had met him on the national tour. And I, I just want to say that uh, we briefly mentioned earlier, we have an older brother, Michael, trombone player in New York, and he's married to Marianne. And when we went to see you in Wicked on Broadway... Yeah. Was that opening week? No, because uh, we had a... My parents uh, came to uh, opening night, Burnsy. That's they right. Did. They went. That's awesome. Let the folks go, you know. Oh, she was so good. She was marvelous. <laughs> well, let me just say that this one, he didn't come and see me on Broadway. I'm just saying. Oh, wow. Now, remember, we're still siblings. Still. <laughs> but I was, I was just going to say, excuse me, I was going to say, when, we, when Dorothy and I came to see you in Wicked, uh, well, when Dorothy and I came to see you in Wicked, Mary Ann, Michael's wife, uh, my brother Michael's a trombone player and his wife's a bass player, she was playing Avenue Q. Bass in Avenue yeah, Q. Nice. Oh, so we saw Melissa on the matinee, and then we took Melissa to see Wicked um, Avenue Q that yes, night. Yes, on my so, night yeah. off, I went to go see it. Oh, and then, on Broadway. And, and then who, that's right. And then who's playing Wicked tonight in Los Angeles at the Pantages? My husband is the drummer for in the orchestra. It's all one sick family dynamic. Let's hear it for us, though. Come on. So when you were doing Wicked. Were you still busy doing VO and yes. going back and forth? I was, and I was taking flights of my. I was taking flights back and forth. I would fly in on Sunday night, so we did one show on. We did eight shows a week on on Broadway, eight and the Sunday show was a three o'clock show. So you go in late and you get out early, and then I would go catch the late flight, like or like a nine p.m. or ten p.m. flight. And then I'd get into L.A., I'd gain the three hours, and then I'd do sessions on Mondays, and then I'd fly back on Tuesday for the Tuesday night show. Did they ever and phone that, you in or patch you in? No, you, you know, they never patched me in, but at that time, it was still Invader Zim, and actually... Oh, so you were working with Richard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he, and he Richard loves to sing Broadway tunes, Richard Horvitz. Richard Horvitz. Oh, okay. Thank God for technology um, now. You know, right, yeah. with technology oh, now, I would have been able to just so patch Look, things no, in. No, I just wanted to say on the same thing. I was doing a show at Milwaukee Rep. Um, at, yeah, uh, and we were, doing, we were doing like eight shows a week. And I was also, I was recording Love Hina at the time, also, in Los Angeles. And I would have to do the same thing. I would do eight shows, take the flight out, come record Love Hina, Monday, Tuesday, take the flight back, and get back into the show. And it was exhausting. That's the that's actress <laughs> life, honey. It was tough. That's crazy, but that's dedication. Yeah. Ma Melissa and uh, Dorothy are the equity singers, as is Jenny sitting right over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, I didn't. That, Patrick, that was good I didn't. I, di I don't know why I didn't see it in oh, New York. To you, but um, I did see it in LA when you went on as Glinda, and I remember afterwards Jenny and I talking about it, and she was in tears, and uh, she described it as watching somebody's dream come true. Aww. Seeing that uh, on stage. So. And oh, was she fantastic She in was that. wonderful. Your sister is marvelous. <laughs> Do you guys act? Anyway. <laughs> Let me just say that growing up with my brothers, I never, ever got a word in. What? But did you get away with murder? But I got away with everything. So wait a minute. This is becoming a therapy session? Is that what you want to hear? <laughs> I mean, actors have to let some of their craziness out. I mean, right? Yeah. I will say this when Dorothy and I... Now, okay, this is the difference. Uh, so we're... The Fawns are this... Crazy bunch of people originally from Brooklyn. You got Jews, you got Italians. It's a free-for-all, okay? It's not really a quiet family, okay? So I'm dating this beautiful, lovely Dorothy Elias, right? Dorothy Elias, who would be Dorothy Elias Vaughn, and we're dating. <laughs> and she comes to the front door, one of our first dates, and she's like, oh, uh, is something wrong? I'm like, what? Well, what is it? She goes, oh, oh. They're, they're, I hear people screaming. They're yelling, they're, they're yelling right? I'm like, I'm like well, who's yelling? Wait, what? No, they, they're asking for the ketchup. No, they're just talking. They're just talking. You're <laughs> so used to that. Yeah, and then, and then I go. Then I go to his mother. I hear. I could hear her from the sidewalk. Mickey, get in here. Wait, wait. Do your impression of. Do your impression of when you oh, called. Okay. When I you called and Melissa. So Melissa, if Melissa answered the phone, hello. <laughs> yeah. Um. This is Dorothy. Can I talk to Tommy? Sure. Tommy. <laughs> All right, so then after Dorothy came over and thought my family was yelling, they were just being loud, I would go to see her family, okay? Her parents are John and Mildred, 
They're 96 and 91. They're wow. the sweetest, loveliest not, people. Not them. They, no, right, right, right. right. They, live in, they live in La Mirada. They're lovely people. So I walk into the house. I'm going to pick Dorothy up for a date. He's sitting reading a book. She's sitting reading a book. It's quiet. There's no music on in the background. The Fawn family, there is music always on in the but not loud but right. always on as you're a musical right? family right so i go over here it's quiet and i am so uncomfortable and i <laughs> and i say to dorothy what what the hell's going on here she's, sure. like, she's like nothing i'm like oh they hate each other right all, she's like no these are actually happy well-adjusted people <laughs> and i'm like i don't it's a twilight i don't know who this, i don't know what this is I mean, anyway it's just opposite well it's kind of quiet over here tom <laughs> You know, God, I wish there was a moderator. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> These guys Jeff and his half bro. Let's hear it for him. Fourth reference. Fourth yeah. reference. Everyone's having a good time tonight. Yeah, go you, Jeff. But Tom, but Tom, you and Dorothy are college sweethearts, right? Yeah, that's right. How did you know? Hey. Well, I was about to ask, how did you guys meet? So Dorothy and I met at Cal State Long Beach, and we were cast in a scene from a play called Six, Six Rooms with View. It's a very funny romantic comedy. Funny. We're and playing we're opposite each other. We're playing opposite each other and we had to kiss in the scene like a stage kiss. Let's face it, I didn't, oh, we lost this crowd. We lost that. That's it for me. That's how you go. going? Oh, you gotta go to that. I don't go, oh, she wins. I hope she wins. I hope she wins. I hope she wins. I hope she wins. <laughs> Well, Dorothy and I uh, were cast in the scene, and I had to kiss her in the scene. You know, stage kiss. And I, I didn't get those parts, okay? I'm, I'm Schlubby the character actor. I don't really get, I don't get those. So I kissed her in the scene, and I thought, might as well ask her out. But apparently, that's not the way to get it. No, 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 it, but it was a stage kiss. But I, you know, we were friends. We were friendly at the time. And um, he, he would see me every now and then, and, you know, we'd go, hey, yeah, hi, how you doing? He'd go, he'd go, yeah, because we, we knew we loved the Beatles. He's like, hey, yeah, we should go out. Sometime I'm like, yeah, yeah. Again, later. Okay. Oh yeah, let's. We should go see a movie or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. Finally, he comes up and he says, Oh yeah, you know, we should go out sometime. I'm like, Yeah. When? <laughs> could we? She could called, we do that? She called my bluff. <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> I asked her out, and time, life is good. Yeah. We got married in 1985. Do the math. Don't do the math. <laughs> awesome. And that's why they're still so young. Uh, 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 we did not get Paul McCartney tickets yet, though, just to answer your question. <laughs> but we saw him last time. But I'd like to see him this time. But that's a whole boat. I'm seeing him this time. What? Without us? Without us? What? Don't they all deserve to see Paul? Jeff and his afros going to McCartney? No, that's that's those tickets. That's like are. three seats. <laughs> I oh, we're working on that. Getting heckled by my own son. It looks like the panel has gone out of control. Oh. The Beatlemania. Oh my God. Just like actual Beatlemania. Exactly. Focus us, oh Jeff. Focus All us. Right. I'm trying to think of something. Maybe somebody might have so, a question. Have question. Actually, I do have another question. Oh, what? What? Now, when you guys were at Long Beach, there was another actor who was there who you kind of helped jumpstart his career. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, that actually, um... Steven Spielberg? Oh, no! Oh, wait! <laughs> That's... <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. No, I have to tell this story. Do you all know Jameson Price? Yes! He was here okay. yesterday. Okay. It goes okay. back before so, that, actually. No, 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 no. Because I... Well, no, but here's what happened. I was doing a, a show with him at the Long Beach Playhouse. We were doing Breaking Legs. Very funny show. Uh, and we were like, you know, the leads or whatever in the show. And he's got this voice that's very low. It's just... He, uh, he has the lowest voice known to him. He hasn't done any have. voiceover yet at and, all. And I was like, dude, really you really have to do voiceover. Okay. You've got, I can't believe you're not doing voiceover. So, so I said, okay, you know what? I, I'm going to recommend you to, uh, it was Paul DeFranco, right? Paul DeFranco. Paul DeFranco was doing, was he doing Digimon? Is that what it was? Digimon. Yeah. So, so I got, I am responsible for his career. Jameson Price. Yeah. And, and I, yeah. yeah so. Jameson told me this yesterday when yeah. we were chatting in his autograph session. And I never got a residual from that. I never, I never got nothing from she that. She doesn't got nothing. But Melissa was so good in that oh, wicked show. <laughs> Have you and your brothers seen Wicked? <laughs> but Jonathan, you had something to add to that. Jonathan, what did I do? Well, 
All right, well, just on a side note, side note time. Side note. Uh, Jameson's wife, Bethany, and I went to college together and with our friend Joe, who's here uh, tonight. Yeah. Um, with his Joey! Family. Joey! Joey! <laughs> we start? Joe, we're hey. going to jumpstart your voiceover career right after this panel. Anyway, we're, we're, we're old dear friends for many, many years, and she married Jameson, and then he was in that play with uh, Dorothy. And Joe is a dear friend of yours, too, from Joe, your Cal State Long Beach crew. Let's hear for Joey and his family. Yeah, Come on now. Joey! Joey! Joe is, a bon you do. Joe is a Bond villain in the next James Bond movie. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, sounds like a crazy time at Long Beach. That was actually a very creative place to, to go to school. We, at least the time we were there, it was really wonderful. We're still, we're still friends with our whole college crowd. Our best I don't know if that happens, but our, some of our best friends are our college friends. And all of you guys who went there were theater majors, right? Yeah. Uh, that's correct. What the hell were we thinking? Yeah. Which I think is a key to a lot of my later success, you know, is that we were able to... Like, so whenever I talk to you, stop boring. Say so yawning. Wake up, Melissa. Ever since the New York comment, I can't I lose her attention. Uh, no, I'm just saying the key, I think, is I learned valuable training. Uh, for me, it was on the college level at Long Beach State. For other people, it could be acting class. I mean, training is a big part of it, if I didn't have that training. But one thing I noticed when I was there at Long Beach, I started asking questions like, um, how come there isn't any film classes here? How come there isn't any voiceover classes here? And, and that led me to take classes on my own up in Hollywood and eventually I moved up there uh, after college. So um, the key is you, you can't just step into a, a voiceover booth. It does, does take uh, training to do that. Yep. What, was, what was that thing that Kevin Seymour used to say in the crack, crack door for air? Do you remember that? When we would do voiceovers, do you remember that? We would do voiceovers. You, oh, yeah, we're going back. No, yeah, the, the closet. There was a, the, oh, yeah, yeah, there was a little, 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 little it was like the size of a tiny broom closet. And just like one recording booth. And there. they would put us in there, like three or four at a time, to do one. No air conditioning, because no, it affects the sound. And it would get very, What's Walla? very ripe in that room. Aww. And when, it was, when the take was done, he'd say, CDFA. CDFA, crack door for air. Because they had air conditioning in the studio. So the, and then he go okay, go back in. I'm like, uh, you go back. Well, in. You you bring up Kevin Seymour again, and I'm I'm I thought about I, I was thinking the other day about this uh, first con we went to up in Santa, San Jose, which people look back on as like the birth of anime in this country, and and we went there and like the guy who created Speed Racer was there, and that was a big deal, and then um, they showed like three episodes of Macross Two, uh, and it was a like, I don't know, 800 people in this big auditorium, and I heard the reaction that people were having to it, and, you know, it was, our voices had a lot to do with that, but the story, but I just saw, I, that was the first time I saw how people were taken by the passion of, of that, you know? You guys I mean? are into it. <laughs> you love us. They had us signing their VHS boxes. That's right. I, I'll yeah. tell you what that was later. I can't even spell VHS, but we'll talk about it. <laughs> well, it's interesting you bring up the film production stuff, Jonathan, because you've done short films that you've produced and directed, so... Well, I'm a short guy, that. so... <laughs> Burnsy <laughs> taking the path? Yes, wow, Burnsy, way to go. Yes, I have um, uh, um, made some short films. Um, I, I'd love to make a feature film eventually, and I, I will. But uh, it w the idea was if I make a short film, it might give me some meetings which could lead to other things. And it did every time, but it hasn't led to a, uh, a feature length uh, film. All my stuff's on YouTube if you search, uh, search me. Tell them about, tell about the two short. Fast oh, well, I made, well, the first short is actually funny. Speaking of Long Beach State, uh, I had a buddy, Marty, uh, we still have a buddy, Marty Parker, Marty Parker. who's a uh, writer and a comic guy and he writes a lot of funny stuff. And he brought me this script once and it was about kind of a Scorsese movie like Casino in a, in a fast food restaurant. Like what if they took over McDonald's, you know? And it was really, I liked the script a lot, and I started looking at it, and I'm like, well, you know, the best way to get a good part in something is to cast yourself. So I said, well, why don't I just produce and direct this, and we'll, we'll do it ourselves with all our, our people we know from college. He played Joe Pesci, and I played De Niro. Now that's comedy right there. Come on. It's on YouTube. It's called Fast Food. And Dorothy and, and my uh, big line was, Melissa, you, you low-life fast food, two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Fuck yeah! <laughs> that was my line. My big line and, in the film. And me and Melissa had one line That's each, right. and it was, 
So it, it, when you see it, we shot it in black and white. We you shot it on burger. Super 16 millimeter film. You eat his burger. Oh, wow. And it, it hey, John, you eat, it, you eat his burger. <laughs> you eat his burger. It's a Scorsese. We have spoofs from like every Scorsese movie. Okay, so that got me into film festivals, and I started doing the whole film festival circuit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, what? Martin Scorsese saw that film. Oh, that's oh, he did see it? that's true. Also, um, somehow I, I don't know how I, I sent it to him. You sent a really? postcard. It was playing at a festival in New Jersey. Wait, so we did a mailing. Used to tell me because this was before internet. He's like, oh, "You're the mailer." So they mail the postcard. Hit everybody up. Hit all the family back east. I want butts in the seats. So we he found festival. He found Martin Scorsese's like home address. I didn't. I didn't know it was that. <laughs> and he got this postcard, and, and it's friend, and, and, and and the poster art for it looks like the casino poster, except I'm holding a burger instead of instead of chips from a from a casino. You know what I mean? Dice, right, instead of that. So apparently he walked into his office and goes, who are these people? Who are these people? What is this movie? What is it? You know, I need to see this. I need to see this. So I got a call from Martin Scorsese's office <laughs> requesting a copy of the film. And then... Um, Remember what you said? Um, what's that? Uh, Mar Marty would like a, a copy of the film. Oh, like Marty would like a copy of the film. And then after... When they called me afterwards, they said, he wants to know if he can keep the video. Is that all right? And I said, uh, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> and um, uh, years later, our friend Robert Malcheski went to Book Soup right. to go to a book signing of and Scorsese. And Scorsese was signing yeah. some oh. stuff. And Malcheski went up to him and goes, hey, I love your work. He goes, hey, you know, uh, I'm in this movie, a spoof called Fast Food. And, you know, Scorsese was like, hey, nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Hey, and then he went, I'm in this film, Fast Food. Fast food. I love fast food. Fast food's one of my favorite movies. Like, so he totally had recognition of It's himself. on YouTube right now. Watch it after the panel, because we need your attention. But and, it's on and, YouTube. And that, um, and maybe you can't watch it because it's F-bombs. But it's on Lots of F-bombs. If you like F-bombs. So this panel will screen it. <laughs> oh, that's not a bad idea. We could do that sometime. But that led, um, the, that got me a lot of interviews and I found out what I need to like go on and then eventually I was like you know what I'm gonna have to do another short film and this came to me via my wife Jenny who wrote a project kind of a um, shout out to Jenny Pond kind of a Twilight Zone spoof called Tea with Grandma about a uh, grandma confesses something she did and the and daughter was grandma grandma was Tippi Hedren from uh, the birds and Marnie and you know we wanted Playing a Hitchcock woman and um, so I also wanted to see how I would do, do with like a, you know, a celebrity, so to speak. And it turned out to be just one of those amazing experiences to shoot it. It was incredible. Uh, it also went to about 40 film festivals. It won awards all over the world. Uh, and um, it played in London. It played in uh, London. It played... Uh, Pretty much everywhere in, in America. I think it played Jeff Afro too. Fifth reference. <laughs> Fifth. Um, and we still get a Christmas card from Tippi Hedren every year, which is really cool. Um, so she's a very sweet woman. We got to we got to go to her. Uh, she lives on this animal preserve called Shambhala, where she saves all these lions and tigers and animals. It was ridiculous. Really incredible. No birds, though, right? No birds. No. But I did ask her a question about the, should I tell her the story? Yeah, tell, yeah, tell the story. Uh, well, okay, so we're working, you know, when you're working on a film, there's a lot of downtime when you're waiting for the lights to be focused and things to happen and stuff like that. So um, at one point it was very quiet, it was kind of a tense scene, and we're all like in this kitchen, and they're about to kill each other, Jenny and, uh, and Tippy, and we're waiting for the lights to be focused, and I go, so Tippy, she goes, yes, Jonathan. I'm like, Tippy, um, remember when you were in The Birds? Do you remember that? She goes, yes, I remember that. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, so have you seen the birds, by the way? Has anyone seen the birds? Yes. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, okay, so there's this scene where you guys are like in the house and you're all safe. And then all of a sudden, you get this idea, you get up, and you walk upstairs into this room that's filled with birds. And all of a sudden, you get like mauled by the birds. It's like, why did you go into that room to do that? And Jonathan, and uh, Tippy says to me, she goes, well, Jonathan, let me tell you something. She goes, um, I asked the same question to Hitch. I said, Hitch, I'm not a method actor. Why in God's name am I going up into that room to get mauled by birds? And he turned to me and he said, because I said so, darling. <laughs> <laughs> That's direction. So uh, in a way, I mean, you could tell we have a passion for 
theater, movie, and we love to work with people that have worked. So when you work with someone like a Tippi Hedren or a Kristen Chenoweth, or you know, you feel like you've worked, you get the benefit of everyone they've worked with. You know, you you get. It feels like I've. I mean, I had stories about Hitchcock that nobody knows because I worked with with Tippi Hedren. <laughs> then you want to tell them that story. No, you <laughs> So that led to, you know, eventually Tommy and I, I, I had an idea of one of my pitch ideas I came up with because of these films that I had to go in and meet executives was uh, just about these three older guys that kind of get caught up in a caper and I called it Old Dogs. And I um, just had a paragraph on it. And then one day I went to Tommy and I go, you know, Tommy, I think you're, this is something we could write together. And then, you know, we rewrote it a bunch of times. And then once again, I'm like, well, maybe if we made a short film version of it, we can use it to help sell the feature. And so... Playing now on YouTube. Also on YouTube. Fawn Field Films is my uh, channel on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, so um, eventually we got some really great actors to be in now. We got John Saxon. I don't know if you know him, but he's... Enter uh, the Dragon. Was Enter the Dragon. Crazy. He's on that great $6 million man episode where he's a robot. Ever seen that one? <laughs> Scared the hell out of me. And we got this great actor, Basil Hoffman, who's in a ton of movies, like All the President's Men and um, Close Encounters, a ton of movies, and this guy, Larry Gelman. Three older guys, they kind of get mixed up in this caper. Oh, and Phil Lamar is in it. Phil Lamar, who does uh, Samurai Jack, and, um, and um, he's in Pulp Fiction, and he's a guy I met, I did, my wife actually did improv with him, and we kind of became buddies. And, no, they, they subbed in for a group called Off the Wall. And um, we just kind of hit it off, and we both played softball, so we played together. And I go, someday I'm going to write this part for you, and you're going to play it. And he goes, absolutely. So he ended up doing that um, uh, with us, which was really kind of like, yeah, Sean Donnellan is the voice of ABC Comedy. Tonight on an all-new Jimmy Kimmel. That's, um, that's Sean, my buddy Sean. Patrick, are you getting this? So we had a great... So anyway, so that's another film. We did a short. It went to all these festivals. It won awards. Led to a few meetings. That We wrote a feature script version that's been around town for about six or seven years now. But we still, you know... It, it, We're still plugging away. You need just one person to say yes. Because if you're in the business in any capacity, the majority of what you're going to hear is no. Even though oh, there's so yeah. much talent on this stage right now. We've all heard no way more times than we've heard yes. So when she says that, it was very rare that she rode around with Wicked until it went all the way to Broadway. That's true. And when that happens, it's very, very special and doesn't happen uh, by accident. So you may know us as anime people, but uh, we're plugging away and there's a lot of depth. every way we can. Take it, Bernsey, and just Bernsey. Maybe some questions. <laughs> Well, before we get to questions, I want you to plug the podcast that you and Tom are doing right now, John. Wow, you're the only guy listening. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, well, look, right now it's in its, I would say... How many have we done? We've done ten. Also on my YouTube channel, it's called uh, Magic Moments with the Fawn Brothers. The 15-minute podcast. Because you're busy. you got places to go. We don't want okay? to give you more than We don't want to tie you up. 15 minutes is all it takes. 15 minutes to listen to two half Jews talk for a while. Come on, it's not bad. You're getting 90 two, tonight, two so this is real. Come on, that's nice. <laughs> anyway. So uh, that's something we've been also toying with, a podcast that we we, are, we want to expand it and put it on more platforms. We, have, we had a couple of guests. We had Jeff Nimoy as a guest. He's an old yeah. friend of ours. And, and they know from the anime people. We want to have Melissa as a guest and Dorothy as a guest. But they're, they're afraid to come on the podcast. I don't know why. <laughs> oh! I went to see Wicked. Don't give me that. Uh, speak, speaking of Jeff Nimoy, I just a real quickie. I, we just, um, I just, uh, I'm co-executive producer on a film that he wrote, directed, and starred in, and it's called Famish. And you're all gonna love it because it takes place at a at an anime convention. In fact, it's a com con rom com. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, we shot it in Madison, Wisconsin at GeekCon uh, just recently, last summer, and uh, were you at GeekCon? No, I'm from Wisconsin. Oh, well, we nice. shot it at GeekCon. The film uh, just locked picture today, I found out, and uh, it'll, it's 90 minutes. It's all about cosplayers and anime people, and you guys are going to love it. Cosplayers. I was a script consultant on it, and it's a really great script. You guys are going to love it. Famish. Famish. Because when you do Jeff anime, Nimoy. you're not really famous. You're kind of famous. famous. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're famous in the cons, but once the cons are over, 
We're just no, wake up. We can get entertaining any minute. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna give you good stuff. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> so. <laughs> Do you have any teachers or people out there that you really feel heightened your career or anything like that? Or really gave you a leg up? I, I, for me, it was just, just keep doing it. Yeah, I, just keep doing it. I remember I, I, I had, uh, I'm on one episode of Cowboy Bebop. Uh, I died on an I died on an episode Rocko. of Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, Rocco Bernard, right? So, okay, so I, many times I just go and do the gig and I forget about it. I just, it's, Forget about it. Forget about it. I'm just, I'm just going. I just, it don't, I don't, it doesn't stick. I'm in the, I'm there, and I give it my all in the, in the moment while we're there, and I leave it all in there, and I don't remember. But I always remembered this episode because Mary Elizabeth yeah. came out of the booth and she was crying. She said, "Tom Vaughn, you made me cry." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, okay." So, and I only saw it recently. When, I, when Joel did my demo about a year or two ago, I had to go through everything, and I found the Cowboy Bebop, and I watched it, yeah. and I like it. Give us your big line at the end when you're dying. You know. I, thought, I thought we could be friends. <laughs> Cheering me up, Tommy. Cheering me up. Uh, in terms of teachers, I mean... Um, it's funny, I didn't ever really study, I mean, my, my high school teacher, I always loved that guy, and we're still friends with him, Terry, Terry Giannone was his name. Very inspiring guy, was teaching us method when we were in high school, and we had never known that stuff before. And I had college professors that inspired me. I think the more you study, you, you know, I'm, in, I'm inspired, I mean, I'm inspired by my siblings, I'm inspired by my sons, you know, I'm inspired by my wife, I'm inspired by that did that for me. Melissa? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I, I feel like that you know you, you you walk through this career and you pick up from each job such invaluable experience. And um, you know, I think like working with a director like Mary Elizabeth, I've talked about her so many times, she's and amazing. I will again. She's amazing. She's she's inspiring, and she started out as an actor, and what she brings as a director, it, it she draws from her acting background, and she's very sensitive and deep, and and brings it somehow it brings like such magic out of each actor. I agree. I and agree. when you find a director like that, you never forget them. Yeah. So you know, I think a. a, a across the years and, and across the different aspects of my career personally, there, there are people that stand out like that who, who have inspired me and, and, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, it's, you, you try to hold on to those things and, and you, 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 try to, you try to get those great things out of yourself and it takes that great person to pull it out there. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to reiterate, um, Mary Elizabeth, we were working on, um, I was playing Mabui in Naruto, okay? Mm. And, and that's fine, and that's great. I was just glad to be working on the show. But one day she said, okay, we've got this character coming up, and her name is Conan, and I really want you to play her. Oh, oh, yeah. Do you think that you would be a good fit for this character? And so I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's take a look at it. And I, and I watched it, and I'm like, wow, this is not really what I usually play. I don't know if it's in my wheelhouse. And she's like, no, you know what? I, I've been working with you. I trust you. I think we can do this. Always she, trust had more, yeah. she had more faith in what I could do than I had in myself. She and I was so, yeah, so happy that she, yeah, that she oh. offered me this role. And the same with Kevin Seymour. Yeah. Back yeah. in the day, I worked with him, and he is the first one who said, I want you to play this boy character yeah. for me. And I'm like... Uh, well, I'm not Debbie Derry Barry. I don't. I don't do boy voices. And he's like, no, but no, but you don't. But somewhere. you can. And I'm like, I don't even know how. So he actually took the time to work with me because he knew I could do it. And I'm like, that to me was inspiring. Also, that someone would have faith in me to do something I didn't think I could do. Yeah, I um, <laughs> want to add about Mary Elizabeth. <laughs> we'll have to show this to her. Um, but um, we'll show up. Yeah, when I had to do Shikaku's death scene in Naruto, it was very emotional because I was losing a job. Uh, but also, um, <laughs> just no. I mean, she she. She explains the scene. She knows I think the fawns are just like out of left field. She just explain the entire everything in like two, ten seconds. Okay, here's what's going on. 
So this is happening, the missile is coming, and then it's just, go. Do you listen when they tell you that? Yeah, of course I do, because I, I mean, I wouldn't know what was happening if she didn't do that. But it was a very emotional scene. I, I, I haven't been that emotional in a booth, I don't think, ever. And I think a lot of that has to do with Mary Elizabeth. You're absolutely right. She kind of makes it a, any director that could make it a free environment for you like to play in, you know? A collaborative environment. Exactly. It has to, and when I'm directing, I always try to be that way too. I, I've learned by working with other directors that if you're collaborative, it makes, everyone has a stake in it then. You know, so you it, can it be, heightens the whole thing up. So you can be emotional for Mary Elizabeth, but you can't go see your sister on Broadway? <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, oh. that family, I no, baby. Stop busting that's his wicked, chops, Thomas. Tom. That's wicked. And final, Mary Elizabeth, I'll just say this. Uh, she saw something in us, pulled out special things. Uh, we were doing Digimon, and I was Agumon, and you were Lilymon. Lilymon. And then at one day she said, I've got something, and it's got to be you too. you got to do it. Have you guys ever seen Princess Bride? I'm yes. Like, yeah. She goes, yes. you know Mel Brooks and Carol, Carol um, Billy Crystal and Carol Kane are this old couple that fight with each other. Well, I got an episode coming up for Digimon, and what were the parts we played? Babamon and Gigimon. Yeah. So and this was before have, Jeff took over. We have one episode where we're this old, we're, we're playing our other parts. Oh, um, yeah, and that's the Steve Blue, that, you know, we're like, we say, I love you so much. <laughs> and she knew we could do that, so, you know. Final, final shout out to Mary. Shout out, Mary. All right. And I'm sure there's some people in the audience who have questions, so let's start with you. Um, so, Dorothy, yes. Don Up was like huge. Yes. It's like, how do you go from Chihiro to movie? Now that's, that's a, a lot of huge. But it, it, how do you feel working on something that big? Um, well, I had no idea it was going to be that big. Let me just say that. But, well, and I also don't record, in this instance, I didn't record both characters, like, at the same time. All my sessions for Chihiro were completely separate from my sessions for Sumugi. And um, so you had plenty of time to just, you know, become that character. And, uh, you know, the whole boy-girl thing was really interesting to play. I love that. And Sumugi, with her whole, whoa, what is going on with her? She's here, now she's here, and wait a minute! <laughs> It was really fun. No, Duncan Rampa v Not Shibubi from the Music Man, Tom. No, wait. wait. What? You got trouble, Were you Tom. in the Music Man? No. Oh, sorry. You guys were in the Music Man. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's but yeah, but it was a I great, got to dance with my sister game. on stage. And were you Sayaka Harold? Too. She was like my third favorite. <laughs> Sayaka was my third favorite. Oh, yeah. Don't go sayaka on me. Uh, I got sciatica, it's killing me. Uh, I got a sciatica, you won't believe it. Which one's your favorite then? You know, I would have to say it's, it's probably a tie between Shihiro and Samugi. I can't really pick. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, down in front. Actually, this is not a question, but more of a comment. I love like your stories and like your inspiration and like your like how people inspire you. As an ex as an actress myself, I'm trying to be more like get myself to be more into stage plays and hopefully get into voice acting. You guys actually inspire me to become an to become a better actress than myself because I see all these stories you guys like reveal to everybody and like your own personal experiences and it just makes me think wow I feel humble that you're sharing these experiences with us and I just hope that my that one day my journey like I hope this is not sound selfish but my journey would be Maybe not as awesome as your guys, but maybe just a, a slight bit awesome. It's going to be more awesome. It's going to be fantastic. Than you got to go for it. No, 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 no. you got to take the action you know, and go yeah, for you it. Know That's what? the key when, to it. We had a very inspiring teacher in high school, our choir teacher. Uh, his name was Richard Odie. He was a great guy. Oh, yeah. But he told me a story once, a very brief story. I, I asked him once. I'm like, you give us so much of your time and energy. Like, you know, what... what makes you do that. And he told a story about when he was a kid, his father was a traveling salesman in Oklahoma, and he, uh, the neighbor used to come and just buy them groceries and take care of them and help them out. And one time he asked that guy on the way to school, he was like eight years old, why do you do this for us? We're not even your family. 
And he said, Richard, pass it on. Whatever it is, pass it on. So I've tried to, in my own way, pass it on. You know, so if in our way we pass it on to you and then you pass it on to us and then we're sh what I call sharing the madness. You're, you're sharing inspiration with other people, yeah. you know. I, I just want to say thank you guys so much for, it's like always, always inspiring me when I, like I was growing up. But even more so even now as an adult, I want to say from the bottom of my heart and soul, I want to say God bless you guys and thank you both. Aww. So sweet. Yeah. God bless you. Something um, about like everyone's path. You you want to pursue what you love, and mm -hmm. I, I encourage that entirely. Pursue it 100%. You don't know where it's going to lead you, yeah. and you don't know where you're going to end up. We pursued acting. We pursued theater, stage acting. We pursued commercials and TV or whatever. But somehow the path swerved and brought us to voiceover. And we ended up here and, and you know, doing this for our career. And we love it. It's not what we thought we were going to do in the beginning, but it is, it's become our passion. Yes. Yeah. You gotta go for it. You, you, just, yeah. for it. you just never know where you're gonna end up because- Everyone's path is mm -hmm. different. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't limit yourself, you know? Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Seriously, thank you guys. Yeah. Uh, in the green uniform? Yes, and but here's the thing, because you you'll record something and you might not record the next installment for like a year. Yeah. Okay, so so you'll go in and they want you to reprise your role. So you'll go, okay, I'm not sure if I completely remember that character. They they play you a voice ref and they'll play you several voice samples and that like just kind of kicks it back into your memory. And if there's been any changes with the character, then they discuss it with you. And actually, when we're recording the game, they go over line by line with you as you're recording. Okay, this is what's happening, you know, and you know, this is what her reaction is to that. And um, they're often, <laughs> in games, you don't even see the other dialogue that you're working with. You only see your lines. So every line is like, Okay, this is what's happening in the scene, and your character's going through this, and you know, go. No That's what it is. Then there's no picture. You can't see what they're doing. You just have to figure out vocally what they're feeling and try and express that. Great, and great yeah, it's yeah. You know, you have to. Since you can't see a character like an anime, you can't see what they're doing. You just have to find it within yourself you know, to bring that back to life. And, and you to, spend a lot longer with the character too in games. Yes, yeah, you do. Well, because a, a game session usually lasts four hours. You're with that character for four hours straight. Right. You that know, can be for months and months and months. And it, well, it can be, hopefully it's for hopefully. months, you know. From your own list to but, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does God have an offer? No. <laughs> His hair is whatever you imagine it to be. That's a God fro. I don't even that answers your question. It's a divine right. fro. It's a halo. You know, I was going to say something about no, it's a hey I was bro. Say something hey about bro. video game uh, acting. Uh, I love, I mean, anime is awesome, but you are limited in that you're, you have to fit in. It's mouth flaps and timing. Mouth flaps, timing, and performance. But with a video game, uh, you're it's unlimited, you know what I'm saying? You're, and you just worked on a AAA video game, right? And sometimes that you do uh, uh, 
they'll say, give me, give me three Wendy Lee. Do you guys know Wendy Lee? Yes. 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 Oh, she, she's one of the greatest directors I've ever worked with. I if met, I, actually if met I walk Lee. in and I know, it's, and Wendy Lee's there, I'm like, oh, I don't know about you. I don't, I'm like, I don't got to worry about nothing. Because she knows me going back to Digimon, you know. So uh, Wendy Lee will give me three of each line, you know. It, it's great. It's yeah, great. We, it can be very creative. Your A take, because, your B take, your C so, take. Okay, here's the other thing. Sometimes they don't even know where this line is going to fit in the game. They don't know where it's going to be. Right. So right. they'll say, no yeah, there's no visuals. And sometimes they have a description of the scene somewhere. No, Often, no. Sometimes they don't. So you're not sure how you should even say the line. <laughs> So that's what she'll say, okay, give me three different reads of this line, okay? You know, like, okay, express this and this one and this and this and whatever. So you'll just give three different takes, and when they figure out what they're going to do, they'll say, okay, we're going to plug this one in here. And Bye, this you one guys. Here. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thanks for coming. <laughs> we'll be here if you need us, okay? Oh, we miss you. Already. We're missing you. <laughs> Not. Oh. 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 That was the character. That was the character. Come on! I hit you! <laughs> one question, one question. Let's see. Uh, in the red shirt? Um, this question is for the entire panel. Um, you've all done many different things in the acting business, so I'm wondering, is there any element of it that you have not done that you'd love to try, either directing, producing, or any element that falls in business? What have we not done in the business that we what would you do, like to Melissa? Do? I'd love to direct. Yeah, I'd love to direct someday. Director. You and me both. <laughs> you would yeah. be a good director. Anime? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'd like to act more in front of the camera, to be honest with you, because it is, it's, a, it's, a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful discipline in front of the camera. It's subtle. It's the camera's right. Oh, it's wonderful. I'd like to act more in front of the camera. Body language. Oh, it's just more work. More voiceover. More everything. More. You got more work? What do you got? You got work for me? Give me I more. Think we all want more work, Tommy. Everybody yeah. wants more. You more want than you can do. ever imagine. John, what do you got? Oh, just you know, yeah, more. I, if I could just work, if John, I could work, John, are we losing you? If can I could you work, up? I'm still reeling from the New York comment. No, if I went, uh, you know, you just should have went. I don't know why he didn't go. Um, that was a wicked thing to do to your sister. <laughs> Thomas stopped busting his balls. Uh, I. <laughs> Uh, no, what I was going to say is, uh, if I could, if I had a chance to work in theater and make a living at theater, I probably wouldn't do anything else. That I would be dream. extremely happy yeah. just doing that. You can act. Yeah, I think, yeah, and I, I think I'd like to, I think I'd like to do Broadway again. But you know, I don't know. I just, I go where the career takes you, and sometimes life takes you on different paths as well. So you know, I. I I think whatever opportunity comes artistically is always a good opportunity. So whether I'm singing or whether I'm in the studio doing voiceover or I'm on stage or if I get to go in front of the camera, it, it's all good. It's, it's, it's all a good experience. It's all artistic and it, it's, it's all we want, I feel. <laughs> you know? Totes. Oh. Do you have a dream Broadway role, Melissa? Oh, like, if you could be in any play, what would it be? Mm. That name that you did oh. recently was really good, man. Uh, <laughs> She's in this. Tell them about this theater company that you're in. That... I'm in a great theater group in Los Angeles. I've been involved with them for many years. Gosh, like 18 years. Um, called the Musical Theater Guild. And they're an amazing... Bernsey, you came? No, I didn't. No, wait, what did you come to say? I've only seen Jenny's play. I haven't oh. seen anything you've done yet. Oh, so you go to Jenny's show, but you don't go to Melissa's. Oh, <laughs> just like Jonathan. Send your afro next time, Jeff. Wow. Well, now I know. But just as a sidebar. So long we can work that yeah, one. Yeah, well. But just as a sidebar, if you ever get to see Jenny Fondue under the Jell-O Mo, yes, I highly recommend it. It's amazing. One thing about, how, I'll say this, uh, about having a family in the entertainment industry, all being actors and a musician, is we all speak the same language. I mean, everybody knows about callbacks and auditions and running lines, and it's just, it's, it's the family business. You know, quite honestly. Yeah. It's a family business. This is what we do. Keep your friends close. Keep Joe closer. Like, keep your afro close. Keep Jeff close. Keep his afro closer. More questions, more questions. All right.
Down in front? Okay, first of all, I just subscribed to your YouTube channel. And, uh, right now, as he was sitting here. Yes. You are off phones, you can do it. Yeah, okay. Do it now, do it now. Come in, we've been waiting for you. Come in, come in. You're at the tail end. Now, second of all, um, being, a, um, being a family of actors, which I admittedly, um, I admittedly am jealous of, just a bit, <laughs> but, uh, but I also admire it. What sort of uh, support system do you guys go under whenever you're like, uh, whenever you're like, okay, I gotta prepare for work, but um, mm -hmm. okay, like say for instance, okay, I gotta talk to my husband, okay, I gotta talk to my wife, okay, uh, let's go, uh, let's get together. I, yeah, I we're in therapy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you should be. No, that's what this panel is. The sun, the sun yells out, you should be. You catch that? <laughs> If you want an in and out burger on the way home, you'd be nice. You hear me, kid? <laughs> I work for them. You know, I have to say, I have to say, the one thing that I look forward to most, w w let's say if I'm on stage doing a show. Musical the, the theater one West. Thing, well, no. The one thing I look forward to most is listening for Tommy's laugh in the audience. Oh, he's got a great laugh. I do. Laugh. And then... Both you and, and Michael Sorge. Right, yeah. <laughs> but then, the, one, the other thing that I look forward to is the phone call the notes, the notes. after yeah, yeah. the shows. Yeah, yeah. And, and do you hear, like, the, the notes or the support. Like, I loved this. I wasn't crazy about this. Or I wasn't... And, like, there's a great support system. And even if there's something that we don't like or didn't like it's never hurtful it's just constructive but I, I live for that I live for the post show talks even after we like see each other after the show like the call at midnight when, when we're up talking like oh I liked this or yeah I love that you know I, lo I love encouragement that. is a very important word and a very important and if you don't get it from your family get it from your friends get it somehow in this life you gotta have encouragement you gotta give encouragement you gotta, you gotta get it from yourself it. too it all starts from within right yep just one person okay, all right coming at us. Coming at us. Coming at us. Blue shirt. Blue shirt. Lesser known, underrated. Uh, I was in a, uh, I was in a Hanna Barbera. They used to call him What a Cartoon. Oh, oh boy! Whoa. I was in something called The Boyd and the Woim. It yes. didn't go. To you series. were the Woim. Dexter's Laboratory went to series. P Powerpuff Girls. All these shows Johnny went Bravo. to series. Johnny Bravo. With Jeff Bennett, uh, who we know, but uh, yeah, we used to play softball with him. We know everybody from softball. Um, but I, I love the Boyd and the Warm, and I've never, I and mean, that would have been awesome to go. Chris Zimmerman, I still love that. that. Right? Chris Zimmerman, God, this guy knows everything. That's why I moderate. Um, that's right. But anyway, for me, it's the Boyd and the Warm. Yeah. Oh wow! Now on YouTube. Okay. You went there's, to California in that a, one, right? Going to California, well, I go. Oh, <laughs> 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 and, and we recorded that in the same studio where the Flintstones, where nice. the Jetsons. We were at Old Hanna Barbera on Coenga Boulevard West. It's not there anymore, and it was like the tail end of that, and it was really fun to be there. Wow, that's so cool. Uh, okay, flag. You. There's an anime called Flag that I did. Tony I directed that, right? Big, uh, yes. Wow. And I don't know how you know everything. <laughs> um, it's a cloud and, server. And uh, <laughs> does it go into your afro? <laughs> the afro is the cloud server. <laughs> they are talking. There's more questions. Okay, yeah, no, Flag. It's an anime. Uh, it's only like eight or ten episodes, and I loved it. It was very unique, and uh, check it out. <laughs> I think mine, oh gosh, someone brought up today, well, there were a couple people that brought up two different shows. I think Justin, were we talking about it? Okay, wait. One was um, Noen. Oh, wow. Oh, Richard Mellon directed that. That's right. Richard, Richard, Richard Upgard directed. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Haruka. Haruka. Yeah. Um, and then. And, and then the, uh, so no end. That was a great one. I really loved that. I loved that one. And then, um, did you, Justin, did you also bring up Flint to, 
Flint the Time yeah. Detective. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Time Detective. I brought up. Right? I brought sure up Mezzo Forte. That one, right? Mezzo, Mezzo Forte. Oh. Mezzo Forte. Yeah. Bindi. Oh my God. Bindi on Flint the Time Detective. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, those they. I've been thinking about them all day. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, he's looking one up. Okay, we'll get back to it. You want to do another? another should we do another question, John? Good. We only have three minutes left, so we only have time for one more question. Green shirt in the back. Uh, last question, that's pressure. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. We might have one more after this. Just ask it fast. You might have to work with like mouth flaps and timing and anime. Do you have? Do they play sound in the background for you, or do they have a re-record the sound in like the sound effects? Uh, they they play it. They show it to you uh, once or maybe twice. They show the Japanese. Uh, and they the show, they'll show you the Jap. If you want, they'll put the Japanese in. They'll leave the Japanese dialogue low so you can kind of match the time. Usually, you watch it once or twice and then you jump in. Right. And when you jump in, you hear everybody else. But you know, right? I mean, when you jump in, everyone else is on. Right? If you're having a conversation with someone, you hear them, and then... If they've recorded it. Right. Sometimes you're blank, and you've got a, a blank canvas, and you've got to lay it down. And that reminds me of a, that reminds me of a quick question. Headphones or no headphones? Oh, definitely headphones. Yeah. All right. All right, this lovely lady will get the Arna Boss question. Well, we'll see. We'll keep going. Lightning round. Yes, lightning round. Well, there was that one Thanksgiving we all screamed at each other. That was well. We always do an impression of our mother Millie, and you know, impression is the highest form of flattery. It Tommy. is, and if you can, it's if you true. can imitate your mother, if you then... can do an impression of your mother, what can you do, huh? Oh. <laughs> that Jonathan. I don't like you all doing impressions of me. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, you have a question. <laughs> I'll just say, I showed my dad that fast food video because huh? Goodfellas is like his favorite yeah, movie yeah. ever. Oh, he laughed yeah. his ass yeah. off. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> On YouTube. Anyways. All right. Uh, Quickly, uh, go. Just throw it out. Go. Go. What was it like playing dad? I mean, you're so yeah. sweet. <laughs> she, she's not sweet, but go ahead. I'm that was a joke. Look how she looks at me. Daggers. <laughs> okay. She's sweet as sugar. Playing Gaz was so great because it was opposite of anything that I get to do. What's the Gaz voice? And what is Gaz? Gaz is really dark, and I call her like a little girl Jack Nicholson. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's so hilarious. Yeah. Is that and, how you and, got to the voice? Yeah, that's exactly it. I, that's, I looked at her, and she had these eyes and everything. But, but she has so much angst and <laughs> anger so against her brother. And I said, well, I've got three of them. Oh! I can do this character. No, but it was. It, it, Patrick, did you get that? Yes. And you just but yeah, it was such a blast. Gaz. Yeah, we got. To, I got to do Gaz again. There's going to be a movie coming out really? very soon. Really? And to look forward to this. That's right. I like to make a final shout out to our older brother Michael in New York, oh, yeah. who always says to me, "I can do voiceovers. I just want to let you know." He actually says that. <laughs> Yeah, go, go. All right, okay, this, is, this is a comment but mostly for mostly for Melissa, but they could be all for everyone, guys. Here's the thing: <laughs> I, for listening to you, all you guys, I will Goodbye. be honest. You you could play if you ever guys go into Broadway, Melissa. I could see you definitely being the lead actress for the female lead for the Count of Monte Cristo, and all you guys oh. could be in the play because I just can hear your voices. As, and how you portray, like how you act, like how you're on stage, portray as like these different characters in front of the Count of Monte Cristo. And it's a great musical. I highly suggest it sets out. You in the corner with the camera. Go. Yes, last question. So, I was saying, what was your, yeah, what was your most uh, hilarious memory when working with any directors, any directors though? I was just talking to Jeff Burns about this recently. I, I got a, a session one day. Michael Sorich called me. Body, I need you for a yes, session. Can you come in for a session? So I'm like, sure, sure, I could come in. So I walk into the studio in Burbank, and there's like nobody there. It was like a late session. That was the first one there. So Michael Sorich comes in, and then two seconds later, 
uh, Bob Pappenbrook walks in. I know you know who Bryce Pappenbrook is. His yep. dad, Bob. I just did a panel with him last just night. The greatest guy. And then Richard Epcar walks Listen in. So I'm, like, I, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the big leagues. You know, this is incredible. So we did this session together, and I was literally in pain when we walked out. We laughed. laughed so much. We just kept trying to top each other, doing these characters, and I mean, I don't know how we got the well, session done. And that was the session where you're supposed to have three beeps, and you're in on the fourth beep. So it's, you know, beep, 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 and you're in, and they're screwing around the hall, and they're like, beep, 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 <laughs> Talking crazy. right up until right your final beep. The final moment of, now we do it, you know. So. That's time with Sorge, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's brilliant. Oh, that's well, one more, 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 come on, one more. Give me some. <laughs> you in the back, come on. The big kahuna, the big kahuna. <laughs> Let's make it a session from hell story. Oh. Mm. I did work with a director once who was, who, who, uh, I don't know if I can go in. Uh, no, they were just not, they were not in a good place. <laughs> and uh, they made the session extra hard on me and uh that it wasn't fun and, and it really, it really kind of makes you appreciate the sessions when the actor when the director takes the take and they can move it now with pro tools you don't have to be spot on you know but uh, right I, okay and i wonder if it's the same director as tension and there. stress but this do not work with creativity does not work i had this one director and i kid you not i mean you usually you know you do this for years you usually get it maybe on the second oh, take, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes the first, but you, you know, you always do a safety, maybe you do a third Three or a fourth, takes. that's it, that's it, move it along. And you know, you're doing, this is why you get hired. You get hired to do to do what you do because you, because you can do it, you can deliver it. So I had this one director, every single line, and I'm talking about the like the, sh the little lines, like the, huh? Yeah, those sorts or the, yeah. the efforts. Or the efforts. I, I, was, I started counting. I started counting on my finger. Or no, I would do a little, like, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I think I got up to 20 on one, on one line, and I thought... It's not brain cancer, you know. It's not this is not so happening. So, yeah, I, that, I, in the car we will talk about, it, and I bet it's the same director. It ain't brain cancer. <laughs> That's going on the Tommy list. It's not brain cancer. If you're just doing, you know, you're dubbing. You get it. Come on, let's go. It ain't, it ain't brain <laughs> surgery. <laughs> it ain't brain. Yeah. I gotta eat something. It's not rocket science. Rocket science. That's a good one. He's not good with the cliches. It's a different but, kind of uh, science. In all honesty, I know who, sh who these guys were talking about because I've worked with that person before yeah, too, yeah, and it's painful. Cut this out. Don't, don't put well, this we're out. not naming yeah. the person. I will say so. this. There was a director many, many years ago uh. who did many, many, many takes. I mean, 15, 20 takes. And that director now is not like that at all. I won't say who the person is. Right, Can we move on? Jeez. On it's always good to work. So you I had mean. to throw right. it out there. All right, last question from this guy in the front. Mr. Orange. Um, well, Aren't you happy to see us? I guess. <laughs> Each of you guys, what is your favorite character of any of you voice in or did anything and why? Uh, well, for me, it's Shikaku Nara from uh, Naruto. Yeah. It just, I think I identified with him. The character changed and grew, and, and I just had a great... Every time I was doing... Every time I did that character, I, uh, I found something new. And uh, I, just, I just love that guy. What a drag. What a drag. Um, I, I used to always say Rika from Digimon, because Rika had such a great arc as, as a character. Um, Mary directed me in that as well, but I think it's tied with playing Edward. Nice! nice. Because, well, yeah, and oh, Dendi on OKKO OK is really, you're awesome. Yeah. But Cowboy Bebop is kind of like a magical, magical like space that we were in, and great direction, great writing, great everything, and just the character was so much fun. Oh, you got it. Okay. 
Uh, favorite is, you know, impossible to say because they're all your babies. Um, I, I would say Kauru was one of them from Maroni Kenshin. Um, but I also loved uh, Meryl from Trigon. She's one of my all time faves. I loved playing her. I in instinctively knew her. I just knew that character. We totally clicked, and I loved playing her, and I wish there were more episodes. <laughs> Agumon! Digibon, too! It's probably Agumon. I had fun doing Agumon. Yeah. Pepper Breath! So much calm. So much calm or not, he's eating. This nice girl gave me food. Yeah. So I can say things like brain surgery. It's good. <laughs> Uh, let, um, I, I have that as well. I hate it. I know, I know Bernsey is going to uh, tie this up in a couple seconds, but I just wanted to say on a personal note that um, especially since we've been coming to these cons, um, <laughs> God, you blood sucker. we have learned that, uh, you know, what we do is really for the fans. And we would be nothing without the fans. And we have so much love for you guys. It means a lot to us that you come out and hear us rant our crazy fun cravings um, about brain cancer all on the same night. I hope you don't get brain surgery. And I will say this more like what my brother Jonathan just said. He's a beautiful young boy. Um, it's one thing to be an actor. You need an audition. You go on the audition. You get the job. You go and do the job. You love doing the voiceover. Getting the job is the work. Doing the voiceover is the fun. You yep. do it, you leave, you drive away, I forget about it, I can't even remember what happened yesterday, I remember Dorothy and uh, my family, but what I'm saying is, then you get paid, sometimes you get a lot of money, sometimes you get a little money, whatever, but to have people remember a voiceover you did five, 10, 15, 20, 20, I mean 91, 92, yeah. I mean it's unbelievable. Yeah. So I salute you guys, you guys are the best. Thank you. <laughs> and that's probably the best note to end the panel on, so join right. me in thanking the amazing Pond family. How about a hand for Jeff and his Afro, seventh oh, reference. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Lucky seven. Jeff Burns, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, go Jeff. Thank you, Jonathan Fond, Melissa Fond, Dorothy Fond, and Tom Fond for letting me moderate this craziness.